Hi, welcome to Thoughts from a Car. My name's Carl. I'll be your host for the duration of the video. Is that getting old yet? Cruising on home from work and thinking today about a couple of things that happened. Uh, they kind of made me think back to the old days, back in the day. I'm older than I think. Might not look as young as I feel, but I was born before the internet. People my age invented the internet, so shut up, you young whippersnappers. Um, and it was a different world then. I was thinking back to it today. We actually do predate the internet. I mean, I remember having a steam-driven computer way back in the day, and that's when I learned to code. Um, program and fix Windows. Windows came on floppy disks, seven of them. And it would take hours to install, and if there was a problem, you had to start from scratch, and you had to do it all in a DOS window, because Windows was brand new, and all this kind of good stuff. But that is not what I was thinking about today. Just thinking back to when I was growing up, didn't have all the protections in place that we have now. We had hitchhiking, and we had kids would go, I would go out. Everybody would go out after breakfast at 7.30, 8am in the morning, if it wasn't a school day. And we would just go and uh, have some fun. We'd do whatever we felt like doing for that day. And uh, we'd come back when it got dark. That was it. We didn't have cell phones. We weren't told uh, well, <laughs> you're going to be home by three. Yeah, that's, I don't have a watch, Mom. Uh, <laughs> look up at the sun. Oh, it's three o'clock, let's go home. Um, no, you're a kid playing in the bloody cornfields and having fun and jumping in and out of lakes. And uh, Yeah, look at the clock. Anyway. I was thinking back to uh, something that somebody said about getting on and off a bus recently, where you have to wait for the vehicle to stop so they'll open the door so you can get off the bus. And you have to stay seated while they do this, and it's just like... I remember when I was growing up, we had double-decker buses. And they weren't restricted to London, they were all over the UK. Anyway, these things had open platforms on the back, and we had bus conductors, that's how old they are. And the open platform was basically a step where you get on and off the bus, and there was a pole which you could use to steady yourself and hold on. And we never even waited for the bus to stop. The bus driver didn't even slow down. Really? Not kidding. Um, it stopped for old people or those that had luggage or groceries or whatever. It stopped if it needed to, but if it was kids, and he, he, the bus driver gets to know the kids on his route and he gets to know, oh, he'll get on here and he'll get off there. So sometimes they'll slow down a little bit, and basically you grab the pole as you went past. And it took you on. It's just like getting on and off the ride to the fairground, right? That's another thing. It's not illegal to do that now. We spent most of our youth jumping on and off moving fairground rides. Because that was how the, uh, the fairground workers pulled all the girls. So we did it too, just to try and keep up with them. And it was fun. The faster it was going, the harder it was to get on and off without hurting yourself. <laughs> you jump off when it's at the full speed. You go flying through a barrier and straight through ten people and end <laughs> up in a hospital. And all that would happen is you get a round of applause and a cheer from your buddies. And then they'd walk on the next ride and you'd make your own way home. I know it's part of life and it was good. It was really good. 
you can't do stuff like that these days. And I'm not saying it's necessarily a good thing, but kids were a lot tougher about that. Had to be. And I'm not saying people didn't get hurt because they did, but you knew when you were trying to jump on a moving bus that you could get hurt. If you slip, your legs go under the wheel. Not a pretty sight. I never saw it. I know people that had it happen. It happened to. But uh, yeah, jumping on and off moving vehicles, jumping on and off moving fairground rides like the waltzes, not so bad. Tilt a whirl. Uh, that was a little bit more tricky. <laughs> and of course, there's always the good old uh, Ferris wheel, big wheel. You just grabbed that as it went past, and you went up with it. Now, even the fairground workers didn't like that. Too much paperwork if somebody slipped. But um, it was fun. I used to do stupid stuff. One of the daftest things I remember doing as a kid, because you had to make your own entertainment in the days before PlayStations and Xboxes. Um, I grew up in a rural area. Well, on the edges of uh, urban. And uh, there was a massive area around us of wide open fields and we'd go and hang out there and it was fun but this was back when if you were going to fertilize your uh, farm your crops you wouldn't have a silage spreader you wouldn't have a um, uh, a muck spreader even well yeah let's go back you would have a muck spreader and the muck spreader would spread physical manure from the farms, from the animals, uh, which was usually delivered a few days before by truck and dumped off and left to dry before it was spread. So what you'd have in the middle of this field is the world's biggest cow pack. It would be about 20, no, 40 to 50 feet across and maybe five feet deep in the middle. Massive thing. And after a couple of days it stopped smelling because it's dried and it's got a crust over it, you know, like the good old cow pads. So for fun and giggles, what we used to do is we would dare each other. You can tell what's coming, can't you? We'd dare each other to run across it. And um, you kind of gauge where would be the best place. Uh, only the bravest ran across the middle, which I did once. And I regretted it because my feet went straight through and it pulled off my uh, plimsoll, plim slipper, pump, which was brand new that week and my mum had only just uh, got it. And I was under pain of death not to break them or damage them and I went back with only one because there's no way I was, no way I was going to go back because the surface had cracked and that's five feet deep and I figured I'd rather get shot for losing a shoe than for being neck deep in cow shit. <laughs> so, um, this is the kind of thing we used to do for, as, as, for fun as kids because we're stupid. And we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have leads, so mummy would look after us. If you got hurt, you did something stupid, you found your own way home, you fixed it. You had to do it, right? Uh, and I gotta tell you, you try walking home with one shoe off, it's not fun. Even not tarmac or asphalt. Especially not through fields full of uh, hay and grain and rubble and stubble and other things. We also used to make forts out of hay bales, which you can't do now because the majority of farmers was taken to buying extremely large circular hay bales and there are several practical reasons for that not least of which is kids can't make castles out of these things they're not brick shaped so they're the wrong shape and they're way too heavy because uh, the machinery can pick them up and toss them in the back and spread the hay and everything's great but kids can't what we used to do is we would every year try and build them higher and higher, about five, six, seven high 
and uh, a full team of us, 5, 10, 15, we'd just all turn up, kids we didn't even know, and we'd just start piling these things up, and they'd make tunnels and corridors and all kinds of stuff. Very dangerous, because if it, um, if it collapsed, and you're in the middle of it, you know, you could get seriously hurt, you break an arm or something. Uh, the biggest things to worry about were the spiders, because the field, an agricultural field, has many thousands of spiders per acre. And some of these buggers are big, and some have very, very, very nasty bites. And these ants and all kinds of other creepy crawlers, plus the haystacks are scratching and itch. Now, you tell me this. If you're up to your whatever in hay and insects and dust and whatever else you'd get there. I grew up doing that. Most of my generation did as well. And you know what? None of us got hay fever. No allergies. No nothing. Now kids these, our kids these days tend to live in their basement or their living room or their bedroom on their phones or on their consoles. Somebody opens a window and the smell of flowers comes in and they get hay fever. You know, it's, um, I'm generalizing. Not everybody's the same, but I honestly think a lot of the allergies could easily be fixed by just throwing these kids out to have some fun whether they want to or not or just drop them off in a field and let them make their own way home you're five miles from home I'll see you mom sink or swim I remember you used to um, get taught how to swim by being thrown into a river uh, and I ain't even kidding that's not how I learned but um, see it happen <laughs> I've seen kids do it. We're out five or six of us, and it's like, oh, let's go swimming. Oh, I can't swim. What? Way! Come now. Uh, <laughs> trial by combat, for real. Uh, and it was, <laughs> I remember one of my buddies saying to this day, he's not coming up. We better go get him, haven't we? Yeah. Jump in. <laughs> it's crazy. But um, it was fun. It was fun. There's a uh, a bridge over a canal about two miles from where I lived, and it was a train bridge, train tracks. The trains went over the top. Underneath, it was all girders, and there was um, kind of a walkway for the engineers. Well, we used to go hand over hand across the canal. About 30 feet up or something like that. And uh, canal was one of the typical English ones, really dirty and nasty and full of all kinds of stuff, including cars and bed frames and what have you. We well, staying around under there it was great fun. Had to be careful, sometimes tramps found the place and they would stay there and of course they make that their home because it's clean and it's dry and they get left alone. So when a bunch of kids come running along, this thing's pitch black because there's no lighting. It's an engineer that comes to work on the bridge will bring a torch, right? So you're walking along through this thing, and it's a hundred yards or so. Ballpark, a few either way, whatever. Uh, and you know you can get through from one side to the other because you did it the, the day before. Suddenly you step on a body. <laughs> Big screams, big screams, because you didn't know until the body is stood on screen that it was alive or dead. And then, of course, they start screaming, they start yelling, and they start running. You hit the wall and bounce off, and then it's just all good fun. <laughs> Ten kids running in different directions into the walls, and we're under some trump silence and new words. <laughs> Oh, oh, the fun we had. You don't get that from an Xbox, I've got to tell you. <laughs> Swimming in rivers, unaccompanied. Solo. Uh, we all made it home. 
some of us got hurt, but you know, you bounce. Anyway, enough of this, I'm home now, so I'm going to say uh, thanks for watching. My name has been Carl, you have been, insert name here. I'm going to go and collect the delectable Nikki. I'm trying not to run over that seagull, it doesn't want to move. And um, I'll say good night and good bless and sit and say good night and thanks for watching. I'm going here. Yeah. Have a great time, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.